It's dads, lads, and kebabs. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of uh, Dads, Lads, and Kebabs. Hello, episode Niall. Five. Already? Oh, my God. Can you believe that? Episode five. How are you We're today? doing well. I'm really well. I'm doing okay. Had a good workout this morning. Cracking on with the day. Nice. I'm feeling good. Nice. How are you doing? I'm all right because I've been to uh, our old haunt. A bit of Costa, cheeky Costa has got to be Where done. Was flat. Where was the invite? Flat, flat white. I'm sorry, but I was already late to this uh, podcast recording today. Anyway. <laughs> Damn it! It's all right. I'll but let yeah. you off. I'll let you off this once. Uh, thank you so much, and welcome everybody who's listening. Glad you're back. It's going to be a good one. I had an email this morning from my son's school saying that he is now able to go and have his COVID jab. What the fuck? Anyone under 21 can just go to the local vaccine centre and go and have their COVID jab. What do you think about that? I don't really want him to have it. He's not going to die from COVID. I hope not anyway. I mean... The younger generation, COVID jabs. I, I think, I don't know. I think it's too soon. For children, for the yeah. younger generation to be getting the jabs. Yeah, I, I think it's too soon. I think, let's let's see what it does to us adults first and what the long-term effects are. Uh, but yeah, I think it's way too soon. Yeah, I, I, I'm personally against it. I mean, I haven't spoke to both my children. I mean, one's 14, for God's sake. I mean, he doesn't need a COVID jab at 14, surely. And I, I think the um, side effects is a lot for a, you know, technically a child to sort of go through. Exactly. Since they always said that children basically wouldn't be affected by COVID. They would just be like a carrier. But if you have mm. the COVID jab, you, you can still get COVID anyway. So it's not like you're stopping that that happening but i don't know no i don't agree with it personally but i don't know i'll have to speak to them and their mum fun times <laughs> <laughs> well i think it's one of those things that i think some parents are going to be all for it you know getting the whole family vaccinated i mean no. do you think it'll be the same policy about holidays and stuff where the younger generation can't go on holiday if they've not been vaccinated i don't think children will be affected by that no i think adults will be i mean would you let your daughter have a covid jab absolutely not no way what if she was eight no no i think not, oh, at obviously, all. not a chance. my eldest is um 16 next week so technically, I suppose he could choose if he wanted to have it because he could technically leave home and live on his own. But no, I don't I don't agree with it personally, unless you're really poorly and you've got bad health issues like asthma or heart disease or anything like that that will affect you if you get COVID. Then, yeah, fair enough. Have the vaccine. But I think if you're just healthy, don't bother. We're um, we're. We're definitely getting some technical difficulties this morning, Mickey. We are. This is the the fourth time we've tried to start this uh, this recording today. We've been. I'm in the you garden. Pre- no, you- I was on the stairs. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, you're freezing all the time, and I'm Am freezing. Uh, not not on the yeah, recording though. Be- so that's so that's good. <laughs> Hopefully what people, not. Is, Hopefully what not, people um, is, if this is the true understanding of what we're recording, is what I'm seeing on the screen now, then we're all gravy, baby. <laughs> that's fine. As well, as long as you can, we can hear each other. I think that's the main thing. Um, yeah. But yeah. Lots of problems today, definitely... though. Yeah. Lot, <laughs> this is this is definitely um, this is definitely take four on this one, and it's um, yeah. <laughs> 
It's interesting. So I do apologize if we <laughs> freeze or we make funny noises during the, the recording. Do apologize. Uh, the, do the apologize. Podcast, yeah. So, I mean, episode five, you know, we've discussed yeah. lots of different things. Um, a lot about COVID. It's, it's all been a bit negative. You know? I know. What's that about? We, that's, not, that's not our show. Our show's not about the negative. It's about the no. good and the bad. Um, yeah, we want the want the positive. No, of course we do, of course. So, I want to. I've got a few questions for you today. I'm going to take okay. you back. I'm going to take you back to the nineties. Way the early nineties for you. Maybe nineties, eighties. You mean not nineties? <laughs> I was born in the seven seventies, mate. Seventies. Let that sink in. I was in the. I was born in the fucking seventies. Oh no! <laughs> oh man, in the seventies, I was, I was a slow runner in my dad's bollocks in the seventies. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't winning no races back then. Uh, he was going on the tissue. <laughs> yes, yes. I just think I could have been, I could have been a tissue splurter. You know what I mean? <laughs> no. Oh, I love it, dirty boy. Well, yeah. We're going to talk right. about. We're going to talk about your early years. We're going to talk about my early years. We're going to talk about school. We're going to talk about your first love. We're going to talk about everything like that. We're going to discuss these things. I think cool. This is what gives us a background into us and wh- who we are. Who we are. I definitely think your younger years molded you as a person. Yeah, and I bet mine is completely different to yours as well. Different generations, I suppose. Yeah, we might have. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Mickey, where did you grow up? In Northampton, where I am now. Just down the road. You've never, you've, you've never left? No, I'm still in Northampton. I've lived in four different houses in the same sort of area of Northampton as well. I don't like to go far. I get lost. <laughs> so, yeah, just move from house to house and... Uh, I'm about two minute drive from my where my mum and dad live and where I was, or where I grew up really, where I was born. Was that so. was that the only house you grew up in as a kid? Was the one that your mum and dad live in now? Well, technically, that I was born in a house in another estate around the corner, but I was I was like less than one. I think I moved there when I was ten months old, so I don't remember any of it. But shit. Yeah. So do you still have a bedroom? Do you still have a bedroom at your mum and dad's house? Uh, my boys actually, when they used to stay over there, they used to sleep in my old bedroom. Obviously, it's changed now, but it's still the principle's still the same. So. Has it still got? Has it still got the Arsenal wallpaper and shit like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the naked ladies on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> what the uh, the razzle and the the. Uh... The Sunday, no, not, like the Daily Sport. <laughs> no, no, not of that age. No, it was it was more like Pamela Anderson pictures from Baywatch and posters and yeah, um, Sarah Michelle Geller from Buffy the Vampire Slayer on the wall. Oh God! Yeah, <laughs> Buffy was a show. It was. was I used to love watching that. So yeah. where did you um? So obviously you you grew up in the same house. That's you know it's very nice. I mean me, I moved around a lot. So yeah, you know, that was we we we've always lived in different houses. But I mean that's quite nice. You grew up in the same house. Um, you were an only you an only child. I am. Yeah, it's so boring. Yeah, yeah. So I'm selfish. <laughs> I was gonna say not you, <laughs> a little bit selfish at all. But I don't, I don't have a choice really. There's only me to please. Do you, think, so. do you think that you were sort of spoiled more as a kid because you was an only child? I would say I got or more privileged. I got what got what I wanted wanted because I didn't have to share anything. I suppose you can look at it that way. I wasn't. My mum and dad didn't have lots of money, so I didn't get spoiled with loads and loads of presents or things I wanted, and I got them whenever I wanted them. No, that didn't happen. It's like birthdays, Christmas, things like that. But yeah, it was just me to spend the money on. So I presume I might have got more than maybe if there was two of me or a brother or sister or something. So mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, if you could have, if you could have had a brother or a sister, 
what would you what would you would have had do you want the normal answer or the weird answer? <laughs> well, I, 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 it depends what your... Um, the, no, the normal your answer... <laughs> my normal answer is a brother so I could play football with because that's all I did as a kid was play football. But if I want the weird answer, then probably a sister so I could go out with uh, friends. <laughs> 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 you know... <laughs> Play the game and all I've that. I've never, no, never, <laughs> never gone out with any of my sister's friends. No, so you've got how many brothers and sisters have you got now? Oh God, um, five brothers, three sisters. No, you haven't. Step, step brothers uh, and sisters. Yeah. Oh, okay. Fair yeah, and then yeah. Okay, you know. from what about when you were growing up? When you were younger, was that? Four of us, yeah, four of us growing up. Yeah, so three boys, uh, one girl. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, you know, there was me and my older brother for a long while. He um, he gave me a rough ride growing up. He definitely taught, tort tortured me as a child. Um, is is, is yeah. he older than you? He is older than me. Is he? Ah, yeah. okay. He's, he's yeah, he's almost three, three years, four years older than me. Oh, okay. So he's a, a boss then, <laughs> bossy Ben. <laughs> he's, not, he's not. He's not. He's not the boss at all. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, so pretty. We had pretty different households then growing up. Yeah. What was the? What was like the? Uh, I wouldn't say punishment, but what was you know. How did your parents punish your behaviour growing up? What was um, what was that like? Was you because obviously growing up with brothers and sisters, we were regimented. I mean, my mum didn't stand for any any shit. Tell me about when you was a kid. Obviously, you know, you was a naughty little boy. Was you yep. punished growing up? How was how was punishment in the York household? What what did you go through? Well, I can only really remember being sort of punished twice, which is quite surprising since I was a little fuck. Um, I remember one time I was in the garden, I was playing with my toy cars, like we smashing them into each other like you do, see which one lands or stays on its wheels. And one of them went really fast. I went, oh, fuck, <laughs> really loud. <laughs> I must have been about, I don't know, eight or ten. And my mum came in the garden and she dragged me upstairs to the bathroom and she was going to wash my mouth out with soap. And I was crying and screaming. She didn't, but I thought she was going to. Ah, see, my mum actually did. I was swearing as well, just like you. Yeah. I think I said bloody hell or something like that. Anyway, yeah. my mum put washing up liquid, my mum put washing up liquid in my mouth. <laughs> Blowing bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I didn't. I didn't swear after that for a long time. No, I didn't. I mean, even oh, now, I... even now around my mum, I don't swear. I I swear a bit too much around my mum and dad. To be fair, and I know they don't particularly like it. Um, so I should really watch what I say. Uh, I have used a few choice words in front of them before, um, which I shouldn't have unfortunately but but yeah and also uh, another time i i think i was laying on the sofa and my mum was talking to me and my dad was in the dining room with her and my mum said something to me and i i had a, a horrible sarky comment back to her i can't remember what it was now and my dad chased me up the stairs trying to smack my ass and I had to stay. I remember that I was shitting myself as I was running up the stairs. <laughs> little Mickey running with his little legs, uh, ran into my bedroom, and I wasn't allowed to uh, to come up my bedroom. But I do remember leaving later that evening, and I'd sit on top of the steps, like on the top step, crying, saying, "I want to kill myself. I want to kill myself." All because I wasn't allowed to come out of my bedroom and go downstairs and watch telly. <laughs> Man. So yeah, that's I think that's the only two two instances that I actually remember quite clearly. I mean, there's probably loads. I was a little naughty devil as a child, but yeah, them two times still stand out in my head. 
But, yeah. Well, yeah. What about you? Apart from the uh, the old mouth washing with fairy. I mean, my mum was strict. My mum, you know, was a single mum. She raised us hard, but raised us good. You know, she, she yeah. was good to us, and we did like you. We got everything we ever wanted. You know, especially. I mean, she was. You know, she was feeding, clothing, buying everything we wanted for four of us. So yeah, yeah. But punishment. She would go in hard. So she would. <laughs> I remember. I mean, like I remember being grounded, having my TV taken off me. I remember my mum yeah. giving me a backhand. I remember yeah. one time, me and my brother, it was in summer, and we had like a paddling pool outside. And me and yeah. my brother used. It was like, we're not coming in. We're not coming in the house. We're not coming in. We're staying out here. And we had a big garden. So yeah. every time my mum would come to the door and say, right, come on, it's time to come in now, we'd run to the bottom of the garden. And she, <laughs> eventually, she locked, she locked all the doors, all the windows, and we, to start off with, we thought it was hilarious to stay out there and just mess around <laughs> until we tried to go back in. We were soaking wet, had no towels, tried to go back in the house. She'd locked all the doors, closed all the curtains and made us stay out there for like an hour. We were knocking on the windows and doors. She was not coming to, so she locked us outside. Mummy, so mummy. We oh yeah, we were, we were definitely remorseful. We were definitely yeah. remorseful. But I mean, my mum, come at my mum. My mum's punishments were she would make us do jobs. Like, I remember me and my brother did something quite naughty. I can't remember exactly what we did. But she made us sand down the door frames because we were decorating the house at the time. Yeah. And she made us sand down the door frames and in the house by hand over like the <laughs> Easter holiday. Every day. Every day Easter holiday. Lovely. Great Easter so, you yeah. had. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But I mean, we learn. Definitely. We learn from our mistakes big time. Yeah, I can imagine. It's In a way, though, it's, it's quite a good good punishment because you get to learn. Plus, you get the house sorted. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but, we, were, we were always doing stuff like that. You know, I mean, like punishment wise, my mum would get us doing something she needed done. So she'd be yeah. like, that's a punishment. We're doing that. So I think that's where like, I mean, things like ironing and stuff like i remember my mum teaching me how to iron you know over mm. the summer holidays so now but i think that that's a that's a generation thing like you know same as cooking my mum taught me how to cook yeah you know, i enjoy cooking i loved watching mm. her cook and stuff and that's kind of how you know i learned to cook was like you know spending time with my mum practicing and doing things and making food for my mum you know uh, we had bedroom inspections she was always checking our bedrooms kids yeah i get my kids to cook all the time i don't cook them dinner anymore i say wait well, go go find something to cook cook your own dinner or i'll tell them you need to cook this and i just leave them to it because i think they're old enough do now they, do they get on with it yeah yeah they're 14 uh, 16 uh, and 17 so why why the fuck should i be cooking them dinner they're quite capable uh, is it good food yeah yeah, shepherd's that, pie, that, that, lasagnas, chilies, curries, everything. And the basic meat, chips, and veg. They, they do all of it. So um, they even make cakes, they make puddings, flapjacks, sausage rolls, everything. So um, my kids have been taught well. Yeah, plus Google helps them. <laughs> uh, yo, yeah. Can't, can't get through without Google. No. How is... um? In terms of your growing up, yeah. what would you say were your highlight years growing up? Which years did you enjoy the most? I don't really remember the years, to be fair. I remember things happening, uh, but I don't remember years specifically. I remember, I remember getting my first bike. It's a, a little red BMX. And I learned to ride on my next-door neighbour's shitty old like racer or something in the behind my garden there's like a, a long path so i was i learned to ride my bike on there and then my mum and dad got me a red one for my birthday and it was a nice little red one you could do little stunts on it and everything and i would ride from one end of my street to the other side on the road no handed it was that 
stable this little bmx is fucking awesome and i used to go down the curbs no handed as well and it stays straight it was awesome little bike fucking amazing so that was that was one of my highlights always being on my bike playing football and uh yeah uh quite early years yeah that was before obviously before the age of 10 i suppose but that was one of my highlights that i do remember what about you yeah, because your early years are quite closer than mine. <laughs> yeah, I'm still in. I'm still in my early years. <laughs> He's still I, nine. I used to. I used to go to the skate ramp. I used to live in a village and just go to the skate ramp on the weekend and watch the older kids skate. Yeah. Um, this was back in the day when Sky used to have like extreme sports. They had an extreme sports channel. Mm-hmm. I used to watch skateboarding on there religiously, and I was like, "This is it. That is my sport, skateboarding." <laughs> um, so then, when I got my first skateboard, I think that was it for me. That was like yeah. my escape. Was yeah, the fact that I I could go out, you know, on my board. I could go to like the local half pipe. I could skate around the street. It was like a rebel thing to do. Yeah, you know. So when my mum got my first skateboard, I think. For me, that's when life started. Because I, I'll be honest, I was shit for years, and I'm probably still am. <laughs> but do you know what I enjoyed so much was the freedom, the freedom of being yeah. like, right, this is this is what I'm doing. And I would, I would go out in the morning, go to the local half pipe, and I'd be there all day, all day practicing. Yeah. So for, for me, that was that was the best time, and they were the best because it was simple. There was no phone back then. It no, just come no. home when it gets come home when it's getting dark. You know, the hours would go by so fast. I'd literally go to summer holidays. I'd literally get up, get dressed, go skateboarding. That would be it. Yeah, yeah. I remember actually a bit older than. Uh, sorry, my dog has just attacked me. Go away, Jess. I'm filming. Um, yeah, I remember getting a skateboard slightly older than after my bike. It went from bike to skateboard progressively scarier and i remember getting my first board and it had a massive tiger face underneath it and i used to go down hills like this standing up and all my mates started getting skateboards and we'd all race each other trying to knock sitting down like trying to knock each other off and i remember one time going down around this corner and i put my hand under the board and unfortunately i caught my hat my finger went under the wheel and it ripped my nail off it was it was black, basically instantly. It was hanging, and blood just dripping off it. It was like, Bleh. and uh, I had yeah, multiple yeah. broken bones, <laughs> broken ribs, broken arm, yeah. ribs. I, but then I loved it. I think the more I got hurt, the more I was fearless about it. Um, yeah, you know, like dropping it, dropping in on big ramps and stuff. And I remember, like you know, we'd go on holiday, like in the UK, and. I would literally always find, I'd take my skateboard with me, find the local skate park, and my mum would drop me off for the day. I'd go to the local skate park, and that would be me, done. I'd be so happy with it. Yeah. Even now, I've still got a skateboard now. Even now, I still get it in the back. Yeah, yeah, I've still got it. I've still got a board now. I I think a lot of guys, my, a lot of my guys my age that did skateboard, I think, do you know what? Yeah. If you have got one, and if you, if you have done it, even if you've got a sport that you haven't done for a while, just give it a go. It will bring back. It brings back the memories for me. It brings back so many memories. Yeah, my son's recently got a skateboard and uh, he brought it round the other day. And I was trying to do, you know, when you stand on it and you flip from the front side to side to get moving and spin around and that. Well, I did that. And because it's laminated floor, I just went flying and I fell right on my ass. I went flying in the air. Bang. And luckily, it was caught on my CCTV in my house, so <laughs> everyone had a laugh. That's awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> that's the funny part of it, right? And that's that's one part about getting older that we, do you know what? I think this happens to every man, every woman. It's the fact that we can't do the things we used to do. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, I remember what I remember that you know seeing the older guys like especially at skate park now you've got older guys going and they, they're still pretty good but then you've got yeah. some of the guys that you know are trying to relive their youth and it ain't happening and i feel like 
That's why I step on a skateboard now and again, just to make sure I've still got it. I can still move on uh, it. Because I think the day when I, I can't even ride yeah. a skateboard, I'd be disgusted. <laughs> disgusted. And I'll yeah. know that I'm old. I'll know that I'm old at that point. That'd be the realisation, yeah? It's like, oh shit. Yeah. It has come. Yeah. It has yeah. arrived. I, to be, I'll be honest with you, I've just started. I've just started recently in the past sort of few months getting lower back pain. I don't know where from. I don't know what I've done. I don't know if you eat, like if you reach an age limit and then all of a sudden you start getting mild back pain in the mornings when you wake up. I'm like, oh, this I've never felt this before. But I mean, back pain is a bitch. Yeah, I get that quite a lot actually. Since I've been doing weights the last couple of weeks at the gym, I've I've realised I do have a back again, and my lower back is like, ooh, that's a bit yeah, naughty. That's what you like. You like. Yeah. I wake up in the morning, I feel a bit stiff, and I'm like, oh, I'm not ready for this yet. I'm not ready. <laughs> for you know, so many older blokes that are literally hunchback like Quasimodo because of back pain. Yeah. I don't want to go through that. I, I I've definitely battered and bruised my body over the years. I mean, have you broken any bones? No, nope, never. Not one single bone broken, touch uh, table. So, it's, I'm quite lucky to be fair. I've had lots of ligament damage and tendon damage in my ankle and my thumb, but not uh, bones. And I want to keep it that way. <laughs> you've managed. You've managed fifty years without breaking a bone. <laughs> I have indeed. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm quite lucky. Really. So yeah. What were you like yeah. at school? What was school like for you? Did you I'll hate it? You, Did you love it? Or? I'll let you have a guess. What was I like at school, Niall? I reckon some part of me tells me that you were really quite clever at school. I don't know why. And the other part, I was a little shit. And you'd be really? right. I, I was, because obviously I was at school when there was three schools, lower school, middle school and upper school. Uh, none of this two-tier bollocks that they have nowadays. Um, yeah, so my lower school, I was always in trouble. And you, you'd be there until you were age 10. So up until 10, I was really bad at school. I was the class idiot. I would be the one farting when the teacher was trying to, to teach us, turning it back, throwing things around the classroom, uh, making stupid noises to make everybody laugh. So many times I was removed from class, I had to stand outside the headmaster's office. I remember one time they actually removed me from class and they put me in two years higher for the day as punishment. And I loved it because I had PE. So I was playing football on my punishment day, <laughs> which I fucking loved. And uh, yeah, that wasn't punishment at all for me. And I enjoyed it because... The teacher I had for that year, for that day, it was obviously a high year. And I was really well behaved because obviously you got all the big kids in there, two years older than me. So I wasn't the dickhead in that class. And I had studied really well. <laughs> but yeah, I was, I would say I, was, I am quite clever. I did quite well in my exams, uh, just not in maths or science, really. Maths, I have no idea what I'm going on with maths. And... Um, Funny story, I'm doing uh, level four in health and social care now, and I had my initial assessment the other day for, and I had to do a math paper, not a basic paper, yeah. like 20 questions or so. What the fuck are these questions? What is an improper fraction? And all these weird stuff, I have no idea what, what it was going about. I had to get my son to come over and say, look, what is that about? And he was explaining it to me, and I was like, but why is it like that? why does it mean this he goes well because of this and i'm like that's not real that's not real maths i never learned that when i was at school what they're never going to need that in life you and, mean like pythagoras uh, and things like that and, yeah and yeah. all these stupid angles and algebra unless you're going to be a scientist really you don't need maths apart from using a calculator adding it and subtracting that's pretty much all you'll well, need it in life technology does it for you now it does it for it you. does and that's because it's, it's more accurate you know you can't fuck it up this is why anybody can get a job these days it's purely because you don't have to read and write anymore i mean no. it fucking does it for you 
<laughs> what was your favorite lesson at school? You had a favorite lesson. What was it? In my upper school, so from age of fourteen to sixteen, uh, I, I used to like obviously the sports because I was a football nut. I used to do all the football stuff, but I used to like Spanish because I fancied my teacher. <laughs> She was a uh, end of like late twenties, early thirties. Uh, little Spanish cute lady. She was nice. Yeah. I won't. I won't mention her name. I don't know where she is now. I have to look on Facebook. Do a bit of Facebook stalking. <laughs> Could do. I've not. That's something I've oh, never yeah. done. I've never Facebook stalked any <laughs> teachers. Did you ever um, call a teacher by their actual name? No, no. All right, Brian. Oh, like all, right. all right, Sally. You <laughs> used to have a caretaker called Brian. <laughs> I did, yeah. Everyone, uh, used Everyone used to be like, you're right, Brian. And he was yeah, that, that's because he doesn't have respect from the students because he cleans toilets. That's what it is, and sweeps the floor. There's nothing wrong with cleaning toilets, man. No, it's not. But, but when you're at school, you're a dick, so... You think like a dick, yeah. really. <laughs> you are, you are a dick, and you, and you think you know it all at school. And yeah. yeah, you don't. It's one of those things. Like, do you know, I, I used to, that's my best part of school, is I used to love fucking around with friends, just setting fire to shit with Bunsen burners. And, do, you remember setting, <laughs> yeah. do you remember setting fire to magnesium? Getting magnesium over like a Bunsen burner. Yeah. Go away. Yeah, yeah. You just try and get as much as you can into like, a little ball. <laughs> <that'll be laughs> yeah. I do remember, obviously, in the science science lessons, you'd have the Bunsen burners on the table, wouldn't you? They'd be built in with the little taps. So all the people that, in my class that would smoke, they'd obviously have lighters on them, and they would turn the taps on and light them. And just, you'd be looking around the room and just be like, blue flame and all the tables. But then, and then the, if you think about, you think about <laughs> that now, how fucking stupid it is. I know, I know. Turn gap. Turn gas on and put a match to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. No, no more lessons. <laughs> no. But that, that is the kind of stupid shit we're doing. So, I mean, like, you know, somebody, like, the last day of term, someone set off a fire belt or, you know, yeah, someone yeah. the window or some, someone would do something naughty on the last day of term but they'd make us all line up on the playground or the quad or whatever you call it. Yeah. And, um, yeah, someone would always do some stupid shit. I do remember leaving my middle school my last day, so I was like 13, and there was a teacher that was always annoying. He was like the head of year. And I remember two children, two of my friends, bringing eggs in, and they egged him on the as we were leaving the school, like for the last eggs, time. Yeah. They, they egged eggs, his head eggs. and everything, and they ran. <laughs> oh, it was obviously looking back now, it was... Not a good thing to do, but egging the teacher that pisses you off for four years is fucking funny when you're that age. <laughs> These are oh, like those were the things though that like I would never, I would never have the courage to egg somebody. Like I always think I'm the kind of person that plays the consequences before I do the action. Yes, so I'm definitely. Like, like, Overthink I everything. I can't. Did you ever have any fights at school? Get any fights? I used to, yeah. Uh, I remember I started to learn karate, and there's this one kid that used to annoy me. So after school in the, the bottom field, I went after him as we were all leaving with our backpacks and all that. And I chased after him, threw him on the floor, tried to kick him in the face a few times because <laughs> I'd done karate and I was thinking I was hard. <laughs> and then teacher come out and told me off. <laughs> um, did you ever? Did you wear a tie? Did you wear a tie in school? Uh, I did at upper school, yeah. 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 Did you go out like what was it? Where you like pull it down, yank it down, like it was it called like swatting or something like that, where you make someone's tire really tight around their neck. No, we didn't do that. No? No. Did I go to a sick school? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Oh, uh, we used to rip people's pockets off their shirts and stuff, and uh, all sorts of stuff. I remember, you know, the little cartridge pens you used to get. You had the little the ink, the little ink pots ink, or whatever yeah. ink, ink cartridges yeah. that you put in your pen i remember getting the the cartridge pen and just flicking it over all my friends backs so they'd have blue ink splashed all over their white shirts 
and obviously that shit ain't coming off. And I used to get in so much trouble. Oh, I did that you know, at eight, eight, uh, upper school I was doing that. So I was like 14 onwards. So yeah, that's one of the things I used to do. Yeah, but, I remember those books. They were deadly though. They, uh, like, they did, that, that didn't come out. A leaking pen in a blade the pocket or oh. like, every kid would go through that. Yeah. And you just put your hand in, your hand would be covered in, you're like, for fuck's sake. <laughs> and it don't come out you either. Know, did you go, was there any trends at your school? What I mean, obviously there were trends when I was at school. Was there any trends that went on? There was, <laughs> there was clothing trends at my school when I was in the upper school. Um, there was spliffy jackets. The little, jackets. Yeah, the little logo, yeah. I used to wear these weird denim black jackets with, with the little spliffy logo man with his spliff in his hand. There was also a, a German phase where people would wear these German jackets, like green, they looked like army jackets, but they had like German flag on. And also uh, like rave dreamscape jackets and helter skelter jackets as well. That was God. a fa- that was a phase going around. You, you, you must be the age of like when like do you remember what would do you remember the, the black bands they used to call used to be called shag bands. No, like people used to wear like loads of little bands around their wrist. Okay, no. no. Was that was that in the nineties when like grunge music was? It, it could be. Yeah, well, I I'd left school probably by the time you were at school. <laughs> Well, obviously, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah, probably. Yeah. I, I left school. I did sick form for a year. So I left in 97. When did you first go to school? 98. <laughs> about, <laughs> nine, about, 90, about 97. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, so I probably started in about 90, 96, probably. Oh, man. Yeah. School. I, I, loved, I, I did love school. I love school. And as I got older, I think I got a little bit naughtier. But I was the kid that always seemed to get away with it. Yeah. Um, you know, I love sport. I was always a you know massive rugby player at school, and I loved to play rugby and stuff. And oh. you know, it was it was good. It was good at school. I love I love school. But then I like to learn as well. But then yeah, IT. I used to love IT and stuff like. I mean, obviously, when you was at school, you probably I don't know what you did. You probably was using. Like sketch pads or something, or <laughs> did you have any dodgy teachers? Any teachers you thought were a bit, mm, it's a bit weird, in, or is she's a bit, she's a bit weird. They, I'm sure there used to be a science teacher at my middle school that used to like looking up the girls' skirts. To be fair, is that what you mean? <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Like we we had a few dodgy teachers when I grew. I mean, I'm not going to name any names, although I could, I could name names and. I'm sure yeah, somebody I, out there would know these teachers. Are a I bit still weird. remember remember a couple of names. But, and going back to the science lesson in upper school, there were, well, we had one science teacher that used to be the, the stereotypical slob, shirt undone, fat, overweight, probably drunk constantly when he wasn't at school, smoked. And we'd be all like doing our work. The room would be quiet and he'd suddenly shout out i can't take this noise shut up and we're all looking around just laughing so like, there's no one talking everybody's is like working writing stuff down not even like talking amongst ourselves and he would just be like going off on one so i don't know what the fuck he was he was listening to or where this noise was coming from but it must have been in his head because it weren't in the class but we, yeah. yeah, I mean, we had we had a Spanish teacher who I think the whole class, I think the whole year, tortured her. Like she would lose it. She would she would leave the class so angry, sometimes crying because she just people wouldn't Couldn't listen. Cope. No one yeah, wanted I... to learn Spanish at school. You know, big chunky textbooks that you'd have to carry around. Yeah, no yeah. one would want to do it. It was shit. But mm-hmm. yeah, no, school was good. School was good. I liked school. I remember, you know, crazies like, do you remember happy slapping? Do you remember when that was a thing? Happy slapping, yeah, where you someone would film it and they'd go around and slap you around the face. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, I wasn't was at, I wasn't at school at that point, but I used to see it and I used to think, fuck, you know, the video's going around. Some of them were quite dangerous that I saw. Yeah, uh, but, well, I remember, 
it was in the jackass years i think that was uh that yeah. was when camera phones were just starting to come out maybe yeah. and people would copy like jackass stunts and early 2000s like yeah. and early 2000s and you know people would try stunts and set shit on set themselves on fire and shit and yeah yeah and just think fucking idiots all that weird stuff yeah it is quite sad that how tv and film influence kids to be fair unfortunately sometimes obviously it's a good way but a lot of times it's in a negative way and then you have to deal with the consequences but that was it that, that i think that was the fun part about being young is the fact that you learn from the stupid shit that you did i think you I have mean, to do them to learn yeah yeah i mean i used to, we used to get drunk on a weekend and see stuff on friday night Friday night was the night that we'd all steal booze and stuff from our parents and yeah. have a few drinks. They were so the do, you, do you have any interesting or very disgusting stories from when you've been drunk when you were young? Come on. Now's the time. Well, I mean, I mean, give me an example. What, what would you... I, mean, <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. You want me to go first, oh, yeah? Yeah, and then, I, then this, I'll know where, where the level that we're at. Uh, this is pure fucking dirty, I tell you. All right. I was around my mate's house getting drunk. Uh, I must have been, I don't know how old, teenager anyway. And we were there drinking all night. And the next morning I woke up in the bathroom I was, I only had a t-shirt on. I had nothing on down below. <laughs> I was obviously naked from that, from the, from the waist down. Yeah, shut up. I've, I've got to get through this right there. And uh, I look around and there's shit everywhere. <laughs> on the bathroom floor, on the so toilet. We're going to that level, are we? We're going, we are going to that dirty level. And I'm like, what the fuck? How did I get here? There's shit everywhere. I have no pants on. <laughs> but my pants are on the other side of the bathroom. Covered Please. in shit. No, they weren't. They were fucking shit everywhere. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm hoping nothing happened apart from I shit myself from too much drink. But anyway, I cleaned it up with my boxers. And uh, luckily, my trousers were outside the bathroom door and no one else was awake. So I cleaned myself in the bathroom, cleaned up the bathroom, put my trousers on, and I lobbed my boxers over the fence in the street. <laughs> what the fuck happened to you? I have no idea, but that's the level we're how, going How with. old are you? How old are you? I don't know, 16, 17, 18, something like that. Yeah, so I have no idea. Over to you, Niall. <laughs> I mean, I've got a few drunken, drunken antics, but I mean, it doesn't have to be shit related. It, it can, it, it can be other stuff related. Come I on. remember, I must have been about, I don't know, thirteen, fourteen. Oh wow! Uh, me, and a, me and a friend got drunk. We lived near a quarry. We were yeah. near a quarry, and I remember me and a mate. It was around about Christmas time. Um, I stole a bottle of Captain Morgan's rum on my mum. Yeah. Like, she didn't drink it. It was in the cupboard. She never used to look at the booze. She wasn't that mum that sort of put lines on or anything like that. <laughs> no. We'd top it back up with water and stuff. And yeah, it's I remember, 13, 14. Yeah, so me and a friend went to a quarry and we were doing shots of Captain Morgan's rum. Yeah. By, within an hour... We'd finished like three quarters of a bottle and couldn't walk. <laughs> so I, we both like, we both went home. I went home. He went home. Absolutely drunk. Um, luckily, I got home. Nobody was home. So okay. I got in the house, took myself upstairs to bed, and I just thought, no one's home. I'm just going to go to bed. No one will notice. I'm just going to be asleep. Yeah. Anyway, that's what I thought had happened. <laughs> so first of all i went into the house 
I left the front door open. <laughs> I, kicked, I kicked over the mop bucket in the hallway. So the wall uh, went everywhere. I banged my head. I banged my head, cut open my head down the side. Was walking up the stairs, obviously leaning on the stairs because there was blood from the bottom of the <laughs> stairs. The top. Uh, when I got to the top, puked absolutely everywhere. <laughs> and then, and then took myself into bed. <laughs> so you thought my mum. <laughs> you I thought really everything was fine, yeah? Yeah. I thought I did. I thought I was fine. Anyway, an hour later, obviously my mum come home. This is what I, this is what she told me. I don't remember a lot of this story, but she yeah. come home, um, seen everything, front door open, water everywhere, blood everywhere, puke everywhere. Come and found me in my bedroom. Obviously, I must have been unconscious, just knocked out. Oh, <laughs> my mum was trying to wake me up. Anyway, my mum being my mum, she phoned an ambulance. So oh, okay. I had I had paramedics come out. <laughs> and my mum was shouting at me, "Wake up, wake up!" Called an ambulance. Anyway, just as the ambulance arrived, I woke up in a drunken state, apologising deeply to my mother. <laughs> um, and then when she found out I was drunk, she was absolutely livid. And I'm talking, she probably didn't speak to me for a couple of days. I can imagine, mate. I think that's wow. one of the most hurtful things as a kid when you when your parents blame you. Like they're not angry, they're disappointed. Disappointed, that, yeah. That's, I use that, that line now. So much more, <laughs> yeah. That yeah. hurts so much more than being angry. At least if they're angry, you know they're going to get over it. But yeah, and then when she did speak to me, do you remember the jobs that I was telling you about? I yep, think I yep. was ground, I, I was grounded. I had my I had no TV. I'd go to school school, come home, do my chores, go to bed. Like, this happened for like a month. And even now, my mum does not, my mum will tell everybody that story. Um, As a so warning to their kids. Like, that was a <laughs> to me. Do you know, I think that's probably why I don't drink so much now. I don't drink a lot, by the way. I'm not, I don't know about you. I mean, I'm not, no. a, I'm not a big drinker at all. I don't like what it does to you. I don't like feeling not in control. And I don't like when people blame anything that happens on the booze. So, what I, you I hate... Drink? No, not really. I think the last time I drank properly was at Christmas time, and I only had a few drinks then. I've had the odd cider this year, like when if cider's been bought and it's some in the fridge or whatever, when it's hot in the evening, just have a cider watching a film or something, but nothing else. I, The thing I hate about alcohol is I hate the effects that you have to deal with afterwards. So, mm. say your your partner gets drunk, they're a complete fucking dickhead, and then they disrupt the house, and you have to deal with it, deal with the issues, the rows, and then the next day, the whole day's wasted for them anyway because they're in bed, and You're they don't. Cleaning up. <laughs> yeah, in this, I don't like that side. If I could ban alcohol, I would. To be fair, because I don't drink. I don't need. I'm. I'm a miserable fuck anyway. I don't need drink to make me even more miserable. <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't think I don't think drinking makes you have a good time though. I, don't, I think if, if, I think if you have to go out and think, right, I need to sort of you know neck nine pints to have a good night. Yeah, I don't so think I, you've got issues oh, if that's the case. All, honestly, all my nights out have always been cheap. They've always been cheap. I've never had that's expensive nights. That's because you get drunk quick. <laughs> I either get yeah. drunk quick and I take myself home. Yeah. Um, I used to have a thing, right, as well. When I used to go out in my many years ago, well, you know, constantly yeah. Friday night, Saturday night, party go out. I used to, I used to know when I was done. I'd be like, right, I know that I'm done now. I'd walk up Bridge Street, up the drapery. Yeah. yeah. I'd go to the kebab house on the corner. Oh, they give you lots uh, of food there. Yes, that one. I think it's like Alibaba's or something like that. That's what it's called. Or Up All Night. It's, it's, it, I think it got changed to Up All Night. They used to give you so much food. I remember that place. Yeah. Yeah, it was right next door to the taxi rank. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So I'd yes. literally, I'd, I'd get a kebab, I'd get two cans of, uh, two cans of 7-Up, uh, <laughs> and I'd get, yeah, I'd get a big kebab with chips and stuff. 
I'd jump in the taxi, I'd get a taxi home. Mm. Every time I used to go out, I used to throw the um, kebab away. Never ate it, ever, never, ever. I liked the thought of a kebab, and I thought it was like the traditional thing to do at the end of a night out, yeah. to get a kebab. And I'm sure I probably would have a lot less hangovers if I did eat the kebab. But outside my outside my old house, there was all the recycling bins were out the front. So every time I used to have, used to literally wake up the following day with a big mess outside the front of the house. <laughs> um, yeah. So obviously the main waste bin was at the back. So yeah, I always used to literally wake up with two empty cans of Seven Up that I'd probably neck in a night. No, it's, it's always good to wake up to a dirty kebab outside your house, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, T- kicked a few dirty kebabs out in the morning as well. No, that's dirty, man. You can't talk about women like that. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Disgraceful. I'm sure there's some dirty some dirty sausages around as well, ladies, isn't there? <laughs> Sure, there is. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I've been called it myself a few times. Yeah. So, childhood TV shows. What were your okay. highlights? Highlights. Oh. Yeah. TV shows as a childhood kid. TV shows. Friends, number one. Okay. Uh, Buffy. Buffy. Yeah. Saved by the Bell. Ah, oh, yes. Saved by the Bell. I used to, oh, I used to love that. With Screech, I actually, I actually na- named my cat Screech because he used, he used to look like him. <laughs> oh, Rest in peace, were, Dustin were, Diamond. Yeah. He's dead now. The cat and Screech in real life. You know the names. You know the names. Yeah. I know. Yeah, Friends, Buffy, Saved by the Bell, Goosebumps. Are you afraid of the dark? I remember that. Oh. Yeah. See, that was, I, that was scary as a kid. Did you say Keenan and Kel as well? Keenan and Kel. Love yeah, them. I sort of got the end of that as I was leaving my teens. That was sort of on telly then. But, yeah, some good shows there. Yeah. Top Cat. I remember, I used to watch that, yeah. Yeah, that was good. that's a good one. Whack, whack, I remember. Wacky Races. Wacky Races, yeah. That's another good one. What about Thundercats? I used to watch that. Thunder, 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 cats. Ah, uh, go, He Man, Hero of the Universe. Do you remember He Man? No. Um, Jamie and the Magic Torch. <laughs> no. Sounds kind of sounds kind of uh, like a weird show. <laughs> no, he used to uh, have this special torch. He used to climb down a tree and go into this other world where he'd save everybody with his torch. <laughs> that sounds like a porn movie. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Do you remember Bernard's Watch? No. No. What about um, The Queen's Head with the 50p? Vaguely. I remember that. You spent after school. It's like school time, I think, yeah. I never watched it, but I remember it being on. What about Fresh, Fr- Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? You must have seen Fresh Prince. <gasps> Love Fresh Prince. Love yeah. Fresh Prince. What about the uh, Ghostbusters cartoon when that first come out? I used to watch that after school. Yeah. I never watched that. Never watched it. No. Yeah. Scooby Doo. Pink- like Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo, yeah. Pink Panther. Pink Panther, yeah. Yeah, that was a good show. I used to like that. Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry was a good one for me. Yes. Yeah, Tom and Jerry. That that spans all generations, I think. You can't. Can't forget about good old Tom and Jerry. There's been some uh, pretty good shows on. My daughter, actually, a few years ago, she used to watch uh, House of Anubis, where it's like this, uh, like this college where these kids go and they have like powers and they have to solve crimes that are going on inside the, the school that shouldn't be going on. It's quite interesting. I started watching that. I used to watch I've watched like three series of it with what my daughter. Captain, Captain what? Pugwash. Captain Pugwash. Do you remember that? No. Well, I, I do know Captain oh. Pugwash, yeah. I never really watched it, though. It didn't appeal to me. Oh, with, with all the dodgy names. Oh, yeah. I remember these. Yeah. I can't remember. Seaman Captain Seaman Stains and all that. Yeah, yeah. How can I get away with it? 
And Rainbow, do you remember Rainbow with Bungle, Zippy and George? Yeah, I remember. I had a Zippy Teddy. Yeah. Zippy! <laughs> yeah. And Popeye. Popeye the Sailor Man. Lives in a caravan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Banging Nan. Banging Nan? <laughs> I banging your Nan? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, probably best. What did you say? What about films? Films. What were your films growing up? Oh, I don't know, man. There's loads. Uh, Moonwalker, Michael Jackson, I remember. Just just really the films of the 80s, like Ghostbusters, Star Wars, uh, 48 Hours, Beverly Hills Cop. Some good ones, I remember. When Eddie Murphy was actually good. And he wasn't doing these stupid kiddie cartoon or comedy films that are basically pretty shit. Like Nutty <laughs> Professor and Doctor Doolittle. I mean, he's lowered his level, man. It used to be so much. It, it was did better when ever, he swore. Did you ever find porn mags in a bush? <laughs> I did when I was. I, I was. Did, right? Every, I mean, me and my brother did. I was fourteen, and I was on the way up to Tesco with my friend and we found a load of daily sports a big pile of them in a bush so we hid them in another bush and we went to tesco got what we were buying and then we brought an empty carrier bag back so i bungled these in a carrier bag and snuck them in my house and uh, that's when i discovered wanking <laughs> so when i was 14 <laughs> oh the you, thing you think <laughs> that's like a that's like a man's sort of right of passage thing that you have to do for the generation because yeah because this was a thing that I think I think everybody found porn at some stage in a bush or outside or in yeah. an old garage or something yeah. like it was a thing like, and I just think God I remember we me and my brother we found it was one it was like a storage box. And right. behind a garage under a load of like jerry cans and stuff and literally inside of it was like, like you said daily sports razzle fiesta yeah load of magazines and we were like wow i was in awe <laughs> i was like like you how do we get these magazines to the house <laughs> <laughs> yeah I've, sneak them in I've got, a busy, I've got a busy afternoon but i think that was yeah that must have been a thing for many, many people to find porn in a bush. Yeah. And they, was, they were good times. They were, you you know, don't do that nowadays. It's on your phone, isn't it? It's on your phone now. Yeah. I mean, it's not on my phone. I don't know what you're talking about. It's not on my of phone. Course, of course not. My, no, I still goes to the shop and buys newspapers to hang over. <laughs> <laughs> Technology, what's that? You know what? <laughs> I think that... Do you know... Did you ever go and buy one? Did you ever go and buy a magazine? Funny story. I was 16 <laughs> and I went to a shop that wasn't my local shop. And I remember Pamela Anderson was in Playboy. <laughs> and my mate was, uh, he used to deliver newspapers. So I went with him early in the morning to do his round. And obviously I knew the shopkeeper. And I picked up the, the Playboy with Pamela Anderson in. And I took it and put it on the counter and I put my money on the counter and he goes, oh, you got any ID? I said, no. <laughs> he goes, well, if you're not 18, you can't buy it. I said, yeah, but I can have sex now because I was, I was 16. And he said, yeah, but you're not allowed to buy it. You can have sex, but you're not allowed to buy a magazine to look at. And I'm, I thought that, that really puzzled me. And I'm like, I can go get that. Not her, but like have a, a physical one, yeah. physical woman yeah but i'm not allowed to look at it but i can do things with it as it were <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he wouldn't let me so i was going around all my older mates trying to trying to get them to come in the shop to buy them make sure they've got proper id i didn't succeed i had two of my mates go to the shop who were actually over 18 they bought their birth certificate and everything <laughs> to the shop wouldn't let me buy it would not let me buy it the lengths that you would go to for porn. That, they were the, oh, God. I remember, like you, just like you, going to try to buy one. 
Yeah. And just like you, I mean, I was like 14, so I didn't no, think you were like, but do you know what I'd even do as well? I'd even, because obviously back in the day when it was the Daily Sport, that the newspaper was good. So yeah. I used to get the Daily Sport and I'd pick up another newspaper, another newspaper, because they're only like 30p each. I'd be yeah. like, oh, I'm getting, it. I'm getting them for my dad. You can take these two, but you can't take this one. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it was always, you know, asking somebody else to go and buy them. But I remember, I remember there was a kid in school that used to sell them. Okay. To sell the magazines. Uh, and I just think, yeah. how, how many times have these magazines been recycled? <laughs> oh, that was recycling was... at its best. They're all sticky as well. With 14 year old jizz on. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. This podcast has took a wrong turn. <laughs> it it did, and uh, I think this is where we're going to come to an end now. So no death this time as we end the show. It's all about wanking, so Almost. it's improved. It's in, it's improved. So uh, yes, guys, any of you that don't like the technical difficulties that we had, we do apologise so much for that. Yeah, any sound, any sound issues we have. This is like the fourth or fifth time this podcast was attempted to be recorded. Hopefully, it went through this time, and uh, you enjoyed the content because I think this is this is the real Mickey and Niall coming through now. The stories that we have to tell because everybody listening has stories that are similar, and you and if you haven't, you're lying. And do you know what? If you wanna if you wanna drop us an inbox on one of our platforms. And talk to us about this or give us questions or things to talk about please do yeah that'd be great I'd love any feedback that you've got um it's definitely welcome we're on instagram you, twitter coffee. and facebook now so we're on all the platforms and youtube so you can get in contact anywhere of, of those and uh get involved maybe you can come on the show and we can talk about your stories your things you got up to yeah if you're brave enough. Definitely. Well, hope you enjoyed episode five, everybody. Yeah, I did. Um, have a, eventually. Have a good one. <laughs> yeah, eventually we got there. Hopefully it's all well and good. But see yeah. you next time. Episode seven, six, seven. Six, seven, yeah, whatever. We'll get there. <laughs> see you later, guys. Deucey.